Hello everyone and welcome to another video um, on our conversations piece. My name is Daniel Oxley. I'm the CTO at Armadillo Managed Services. We've got a real treat this week. Um, every once in a while, technologies come along that sort of, you look at it, you think, why has no one thought of this before? Why has it taken so long um, for the market to realise how fantastic an idea is? And this product is one of those absolute might drop moments for me it really is um so without further ado i, I i'm joined here by antonio i'll let him introduce himself hey uh good morning everyone uh, and daniel thank you so much for the invitation it's a pleasure to be here representing uh zero networks um my name is antonio uh portuguese um based in lovely uh, lisbon sunny for the majority of the days um have been in the it industry for 23 years now so i'm 25 you can um, definitely uh, um think that i've started earlier um, anyway, jokes, <laughs> jokes apart, um, started out in, you know, service desk many moons ago um, and had a very diverse uh, career, um, have been blessed with uh, knowing a lot of um, good uh, people in good organizations. And uh, I joined Zero in November last year. And before that, I uh, passed through Sentinel One, both as a product manager and a field CISO. And before that, I was 10 years at Microsoft also working in various products that uh, eventually many of uh, people might know, like Defender for Endpoint or M35 Defender, the XDR product. Fantastic, thank you. So um, I won't try and uh, and uh, explain what Zero is, but we'll get into that. So Zero Networks is uh, we just we've just brought Zero Networks into our portfolio, and every customer that or prospect that we discuss it with, it sort of blows their mind, and it's really been fantastic to have these kind of conversations with people. Um, so Antonio, could you give us a quick sort of a 30 second summary of Zero Networks? Yep, uh, Zero Networks considers itself to be a zero trust platform. Um, and this is because we are dealing within the principles of zero trust, like identity fabric and network controls. But um, ultimately we are a software defined based micro segmentation uh, platform for both network and identity and also providing a secure access platform that we call NextGen ZTNA. Fantastic, perfect. And so look, right out the bat, the first thing that springs to mind is this is a really crowded market. You have lots of vendors in this space from the really huge ones that, uh, you know, the, the Zscaler, the Gardico Akamai, um you've got perimeter 81 they've all i'm not saying they're all the same technologies they all sort of overlap now zero networks is you're fighting for your own space in this market so what is it that you do that should that should have businesses pay attention to make them sort of sit up in their chairs sure. like hang on a minute yeah, yeah. I, like, find I think out you more. actually kind of gave a nice insight there uh just the beginning um in the way that i typically show this uh, or talk about this with organizations is that we're here to solve very complex problems in very simple ways. Um, almost like I also typically say solving them in very elegant ways. Like why hasn't every um, or anyone actually thought about this before? Like it's it's so simple. I mean, it's obviously like very complex in the back scene. Uh, we're taking a lot of uh, weight out of the shoulders of organizations. But it's supposed to be simple for organizations and, and very often i mean if i have to compare to technology in general like it's not only the competitors eventually are running within this space or overlap within this space um very often we techies like to trade uh take into the uh you know the scene the very very needy uh gritty details of like everything very deep and transporting that complexity into organizations even within the uh, actual platforms that are being sold that's definitely something that Zero Networks is not here to do. Like we're um, trying to make sure that our platform is as easy to adopt and as easy to use as it can be. Um, regardless if you're like a 20 uh, people organization or 200,000 organization, a uh, thousand people organization that is. Um, so that is very important. And how we do that, I mean, we do it through various um, important meaningful ways. First and foremost is really when we talk about automation, we talk about automation. It's not just, again, another, um, you know, uh, gimmick or uh, shim of trying to accomplish automation of learning traffic patterns and generation of access rules and um, automatically protecting um, assets. Again, we're focused at the asset level. Um, 
So very often you know, organizations will not believe this is so common. And if you go to the website, you'll actually see a lot of testimonials, not paid ones, by the way, they were like voluntarily <laughs> uh, given by customers. Um, and during the initial calls, they will say very often, yeah, this is, you know, BS. Um, this is not real. This is again in marketing spiels and you're selling me like the moon and beyond. What do we typically say and going back again to the ease of use and ease of deployment, not only doing a, a POC scenario, but even like the typical deployment in production, um, we basically just require the customer to set up something in 30, 45 minutes. And from that moment on, we can actually start monitoring and learning from all of the assets across the organization. And in 30 days, we really go from that zero to hero of like very flat network, which unfortunately very often is, is the case, like a VLAN one for everything, um, and going from a 0% micro-segmented into the 99% micro-segmented, um, again, in those 30 days. Um, and this is this is unique to begin with. Like right. first and foremost, exactly the automation of the platform, not only during the initial uh, period, but also what we call day two. Um, and I'm going to be also very kind of like very often we will care about what is really meaningful and important for organizations at the end of the day um, from a product perspective. And we'll put our resources focused on really what matters. It's not about, you know, nice and shining graphics um, and eventually connection graphics. Like if mm -hmm. automation is really what's going to shine and make micro segmentation achievable, possibly simple as we say, that's our focus. Like that's where we focus on. Yeah. Doesn't mean that we don't have plans to improve various of the other areas that eventually customers are asking for, but we have to be true to ourselves and mm -hmm. focus on where we really want to shine and make a difference. Otherwise, they're going to be just exactly like the others. Um, so that's one very big, uh, big point: the automation, um, and not only on the initial uh, learning period, but also the day two operations, meaning forever, because the mm -hmm. network is a living yes. entity. Um, new services, new requirements, and like, how can we actually continuously bootstrap that knowledge of generating access rules and notifying customers on things that are being blocked and without going into, again, the complexities of like, oh, anomaly detection and what's allowed, what's not allowed. No, we, we solve that in uh, very clever ways, which is, is a nice um, route into the MFA policies, uh, which is something which is unique to um, uh, Zero Networks. We have a patent for that. And we actually can apply MFA into anything from layer three to layer seven. So that means that I can very easily distinguish between things that are supposed to happen as a uh, constant allow between a subset of assets, like a micro segmented pocket of assets. But eventually, even if it's supposed to be allowed within that pocket or that micro segmented pocket, it's not going to be allowed by default. And it's going to be behind a MFA wall. Um, again, mm -hmm. the MFA is going to be exactly whatever yes. the customer is using as their own MFA service. It's important to ensure that we're not actually adding more attrition into the uh, security uh, processes or adding more fatigue into it. We are very, very cautious on how to do that, and we provide organizations a lot of um, flexibility. But what that brings also into the uh, mix, and I mentioned at the beginning, the zero trust principles is like the identity fabric. So it's almost like seeing network access control now in real time using your users and your groups and your idp as a as a backbone and that really changes the game and very often it's 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 funny to see when you know we're pitching this to a customer and it clicks and they go like yeah, oh wow uh, yeah. so i'm not actually dealing with the, the typical five tuple of the network of like just ips and ports mm -hmm. no it's like any asset but if it's antonio trying to access whether um, Antonio should be allowed or not, that's going to be part of the definition of the policies um, that we not only manually automate, or I'm sorry, <laughs> automatically uh, generate, but also the customer has the ability to eventually define whatever mm -hmm. policies they want over whatever they deem to be privileged in nature, their own LOB apps, et cetera. Yeah, and, that, um, and that links into, there's a mantra which some people say that identity is the real perimeter. Yes. And one of the killer features that, that Zero has uh, for me is the fact that you could take anything, any communication, as you said, between layer three and layer seven, and then wrap it in an MFA um, exactly. session, which, and then you can even time box it as well, I believe. So you can say, okay, I want um, this SSH connection or 
or, or some other service and wrap it in MFA? I mean, could you even, if I was going to take that to an extreme, could you even have it as like a printer? So the only way you can print yep. is with, and how cool is that? Okay. Yeah. Um, so again, because we're able to control individual assets, both from their inbound and outbound chains, you can apply those MFA policies exactly like you mentioned, it with a just in time uh, nature, not only of self provisioning, self servicing, right? But also with a time bomb of saying Antonio can only access the domain controller over RDP um, uh, in an hour, like time frame. After one hour, eventually that uh, access rule is uh, removed. And naturally, I'm prompted again for MFA if the communication continues. Otherwise, it's going to be removed. And this is again yet another. Um, aha moment for customers when they go like, exactly. oh, so no more stall rules. You know, they eventually are open like five years ago and no one knows exactly why they are needed. Um, and it removes the um, attack surface of when things are not yes. needed. Yeah. Um, also, th that click moment is when we say to a customer, those ports are not open now by default. And again, following our mission mm -hmm. of stopping completely lateral movement within organizations, that means like SMB, RPC, RDP, SSH, like all of those things that by nature and by design very often needs to be open from a functional point of view, they're not. They're only open on demand and only to the machine yeah. and the user and the process and the combination of all of that um, only only um, given a, a period of time. So that means like attackers won't see any ports open, pen testers won't see any ports open, um, and that really, really shines. Um, yeah, so and, and you've made... A I don't want to. I just want to make sure that they came out. You made some really good points, um, and two of them were the ones which did it for me. Really made me sort of sit back and think about zero networks. Um, first and foremost is you don't have an agent. Yes. Okay. It's so just to under just to go back then uh, underline that it's uh, and zero trust. I know it's a bit of an umbrella topic. A lot of people say when we talk specifically micro segmentation, network segmentation. Your agent is. You don't need hardware. Is that right? You don't need an agent deployed, and yet you're still able to achieve everything that you've discussed in that manner. In an agentless form. Yeah. yeah. So and, and you, yes, sorry, go sorry, on. Carry on. <laughs> um, let me let me go back into the uh, what makes us different. Initial question. Uh, we kind of went into the automation and ease yeah. of deployment and ease of adoption. Actually, was kind of having the agentless. Um, piece or component at its core, naturally. Um, as we go into a organization and we deploy our small bridge piece of software into a Windows server, that allows us to communicate with all of the assets, whether it's Windows, Linux, or Mac, uh, using your own um, authentication uh, mechanisms within your organization, so further reinforcing the micro-segmentation uh, element, because those machines don't need to talk yeah. to the cloud at all. Um, and that allows us to, at scale, like I said, in 30, uh, 45 minutes, deploy that service uh, inventory, for example, your Active Directory or Azure AD or Ansible, whatever it is as a method of asset inventory repository that you can provide to us. And we'll manage exactly those connections to those assets, uh, enable the events that we need to enable, collect the metadata of those activities, route into the cloud, and those will be leveraged exactly for learning purposes from the automation engine, mm. but also for your own uh, consumption for troubleshooting, um, accessing or assessing whatever you need to assess um, or even like threat hunting. If that um, is required, we have customers that use it for all sorts of uh, mechanisms. We actually have a interesting customer that calls um, the tool um, our platform to be the shut up tool because <laughs> uh, when they want to really um, be sure of what happened from a network perspective, it's it's so easy to access and so easy to actually see the data across all of the assets within the organization that you don't have to actually go and fish about like, oh, where, where to which firewall should I go and to which switch should I go or which machine should I go? It's there. It's a centralized pane of glass for everything at scale, right? And that's actually links on to the next sort of topic point I've got is around the deployment. So um we let's call them traditional technologies the ones which everyone that the brand names that people may or may not know um some of them are hardware based you might have to roll out firewalls which is network infrastructure and as you made the point there well which console or which switch am i logging into to make a change or the ones where you roll out the agents um i've yet to meet a customer that has managed a hundred percent rollout of yep. their agent 
to do their micro segmentation on a uh, project. So if you're not agent list, well then how long is it, how long, so if you are agent list, how long does it take typically for a zero networks customer to be up and running? Well, that's that's exactly the 30 to 45 minutes time frame of as long as we have the Windows Server domain join machine, we go we go there, install the piece of um, uh, software that we have that bridges the cloud. And that machine acts as a, I would say, like a commander, um, which will ensure that we're going to be able to inject the firewall rules into each individual asset and also retrieve the metadata of those network connections. Um, so typically, it's like an an hour call for the setup, just like hey. Here we are explaining the pre-requirements. You have the server ready for us. We go and install that. And in really like 45 minutes, we'll start having the inventory of the assets within our organization and we'll start connecting to them and collecting the metadata and learning from them. And in 30 days, the typical time frame that we re recommend, we'll learn all of the traffic requirements across all individual assets, again, inbound and outbound chains, and we'll generate those access rules so that automatically once more by the end of the 30 days we're going to flip the switch and protect those assets inject the access rules that are needed to be injected as access rule access rules and then it have the overlying arch of the mfa policies to complement those right mm -hmm. uh, with the just-in-time nature um i mean the feedback is really really amazing from the that initial call of oh, like, i'm not surprised if, called, <laughs> 35 liars <laughs> right um, but we all say, all, always say to customers that, hey, the proof is in the pudding. Deploy, see it for yourself. Um, we're not here to, um, again, uh, deceive anyone. Um, and as they actually see the generation of the access rules, and very importantly, dynamically based into applications and services. Like if you ask me one other element of uh, differentiation points with various other platforms, it, it requires a lot of bootstrap manual work, even on generating the ground, um, the foundational objects for you to build manual rules or the automation to do something with that. Um, and because we're at the asset level, um, we're basically able to retrieve all of that information, like from processes and listening ports and patterns of traffic and identify all of those apps and services across the organization and create subgroups if needed for those. Obviously, we don't want to have all SQL servers accessing all SQL servers, but you can eventually say, Antonio, as a DBA admin, can access all SQL servers within the organization with MFA, right? Yeah. Once more, this creates such an abstraction layer of how do you define network access control so simplistic that very often people are like, okay, I have to redesign like how I think and I, how I structure within my mind um, the actual access controls within my organization. Um, so yeah, definitely no inline inspection, no changes to the network. We're not consuming net flows or heavy things. We're just going there with a box, connecting to the machines, and we're, we're done with it. Mm. Um, and yes, from a change management perspective, that's very often a very um, heavy load into any organization, regardless of the size, no, no. of deploying agents, doing changes to networks, and maintaining those things over time. And it's not uncommon for us to talk to organizations that eventually say it, something like, We've been doing a deployment with X vendor over the last three years, and we have, I don't know, like 40% of our goal covered. And very often oh, with a definitely. lot of with a lot of effort um, on, like we even talked recently to a customer that they created their own automation layer with Terraform and their own intelligence layer to automate the generation of access rules because the platform was not giving them that level of flexibility. So yeah. Yeah, and, and that's probably a great place out because I know I've just peeked at the clock. We, we're running lower time. The your points there around the fact that it actually can tick a, a huge number of use case or requirements rather um, with customers. It's zero agents. It's zero ne uh, network change. Yeah, uh, the MFA piece is my all-time favorite feature that you've got. It and it I cannot stress. I still look at it and I still think this is just an amazing piece of tech. Um, Listen, Antonio, I feel like we could talk about this for a Forever. huge amount of time, but time, unfortunately the clock's against us. Thank you very much for My joining pleasure. me um, and good luck with Zero Networks. And we'll thank speak you so soon. Much. And thank, thank you, you very much for your support. I appreciate it. Yes. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.